Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker and today I'm gonna be trying a new kind of video. So what I'm doing is actually going through blogs on the 2 plus 2 thread. Generally I've been using this forum to find high stakes hand histories. But part of the issue with going over high stakes hand histories is that the players there are going to be doing a ton of stuff correctly. So even when we find mistakes, there are going to be very specific types of very advanced mistakes. There is a ton of basic stuff that they just do well. And I think by going over these blogs and trying to help people probably end up reaching a larger audience in terms of the types of spots and the types of mistakes that are going to be reached. And yeah, just exciting, to be honest. I think uh, it could be really, really fun uh, if I manage to, to help some of these guys. We'll see. So I'll start out quickly going over this first guy, Soriathon. You guys can find the link in the description of the video if you want to read through everything. But long story short, I read through this. This guy has been playing poker for 16 years. He's been playing it, uh, you know, seriously, maybe for, for some part of the last seven years. He took a break during COVID and he kind of says in the end, you know, TLDR, he crushes live poker. He has a deep, deep understanding of game theory, optimal play. He studies all the time. He's doing really well in live games and maybe really well on some other sites, but he is getting decimated on ACR playing low stake splits games, like absolutely destroyed. And he's saying, you know, anything you guys can do to help, let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of give my two cents, maybe go over some hands and see if I can be of any help. I guess kind of the first thing I would say, this guy is saying that he's playing very, very low stakes on ACR. So uh, 60 NL buy-in pretty much. And I think before that, maybe even a lower buy-in. Now, up until now, he was playing 1, 3, and 2, 5, and 5, 10 live. And first thing that I could see happening is that when you move down stakes, which is clearly what's happening here, you have expectations for having really good, easy results. And this is kind of a bad starting point for tilting and playing badly and actually not working on your game in a correct way. Because if you're used to playing 2-5 and 5-10, how seriously are you taking $60? And I don't mean seriously in the sense of, you know, he's probably trying to play every hand well, but there is an emotional aspect to poker where you don't want to give up, you don't want to fold aces, maybe some people are afraid to bluff, some people are afraid to not bluff, some people thin value bet because they're afraid to get bluffed. Like there are tons of these kind of emotional traps going on when you're playing poker. And when the stakes are kind of lower than you're used to, there is a decent chance that your emotions get the better of you because the money is actually not very significant. And that makes you take it less seriously. So let's say, you know, someone goes bet check a bet in a spot. Maybe you just call because you're curious. Or let's say it's a multi-way pot, it's checked down to the river. You don't even think of bluffing because who cares, it's $2 in a pot or whatever. Funny enough, these things have an enormous effect on your win rate. I know it, it's very common and very natural to think that if you're not doing well, maybe, you know, maybe people are cheating. Maybe it's you know, you need to improve uh, in big pots, but very often the solution is actually just being more focused, being more motivated. And certainly you don't need to have a deep understanding of game theory and optimal play in order to beat these low limits. I think the main thing you need is focus and discipline and fundamentals. So if you're very focused, very disciplined, and you don't tilt, you don't spew off, you don't make curiosity plays, I think you're just going to have a decent win rate. And it's not more difficult than that. And given, you know, the author of this blog is getting obliterated, or at least, yeah, not doing very well, not doing as well as his expectations, I would think that he is just not playing solid enough, consistently enough. That would be my best guess. So kind of the advice I would have, and we'll go through some hand histories as we keep going. 
but I, I was going through this thread and not really reading everything, but I saw uh, th these kind of posts where he shows, Hero shows his win rate from different positions over a very tiny sample of hands. This is completely not what you want to be doing. Sample is too small to mean anything, and even if it weren't, there's so much variance in these types of analysis. There is no poker secret that you're missing that you're not winning. It's not like everyone knows how to play the button in some magical way and you're messing up specifically on the button. That's not what is going on. It's variance, it's tilt, it's focus, it's fundamentals, it's exploitation. And it's being willing to kind of sit down and put in the work to get small edges all the time. Because as long as you are improving day to day and taking care of yourself emotionally, of all the, the tilt that might be going on, things are going to, you know, head up, right? If you have the ability to win, you start doing better and better and better. As long as you're not tilted and you let go of your expectations to crush these stakes, which are way lower than you expected. I, if I had to guess, you know, someone who was, he, he was saying he was on track to make like 150K or 120K a year before coronavirus hit. So there's probably this expectation of, you know, I'm going to sit down at $60 buy in, I'm going to crush everyone, I'm going to move up to the next buy in and move up to the next buy in and, you know, just do really, really well. And when that doesn't come to fruition easily, I've been there myself personally. It's just tough to stay focused enough. And when you lose focus, it's just hard to win in poker. Like it doesn't take a lot of blunders to completely destroy your win rate. Win rates are often measured in, you know, four big blinds per hundred hands. Now you make 120 big blind blunder, you've killed your win rate for 500 hands. So very easy to very quickly lose if, if you're doing this. So looking through the blog, I, I really wish there were more hands. And I think this maybe kind of goes to show it in the sense that if you were curious and trying to learn, you should every session that you're playing be marking hands where, you know, I'm really curious how this spot plays or how that spot plays or what I should have done in this situation. And you should be posting these in the blog to get opinions from people. Me not seeing this is, I think, the kind of what I expect where probably this player is expecting things to be easier than they are and not really treating poker as as much of a learning experience. First time hands are posted here, it's just a bunch of spots with him having aces and ace king. Going forwards, there are a few hands which, you know, we, we will try to quickly go over. I guess we can even go over all of them. Here, hero gets aces and you see. 200 deep UTG raises, we 3 bet, cut off called 4 bets, we 5 bet, cut off calls. It's this 8 3 2 deuce queen jack board. Hero goes bet, bet, shove, runs into 8s. Just kind of cooler. I think you played well, your opponent played bad. Not worth spending time on this. The main thing you need to do here is manage to let go of your emotions and keep playing well after this hand happens. That is like the key thing to realize. Your opponent's preflop action, uh, set mining with this SPR and cold four betting his hand in the first place is probably losing him money against you. He happened to hit this time. That, that's poker. And you really need to let go and be like, okay, like who cares? I won money here, right? Like think of this as, as though you won money, even though you lost and just move on. Next hand, uh, MP raises two and a half X, cut off three bets, eight and a half X, hero cold four bets from the button, gets shoved into, calls, and we see aces losing to 10-9 suited, and again, you have to finish this with a smile on your face, or you're going to go insane, but uh, clearly not an interesting hand to post, and just venting frustration, which is fine, you need to vent, you need to let this stuff out, but my worry is you might have a bit too much of it, given, given everything you've described. So next hand, Hero raises from MP with Ace King, gets three bet. Here he four bets, and here I actually would consider this hand a bit of a, a blunder. So, in in theory, we'll like we'll see results. Maybe it's against a big recreational. I think the four bet size is a bit too small. I think, given you're 120 deep, Ace King off, 
actually gets a bit iffy stacking off here. And me personally, had I 4-bet to this size and got shoved on, I would consider this just a, an easy fold at 50nl. Just to quickly show this, right? Because this might be super controversial and people might be like, oh, GTO, GTO, like you guys have 120 deep sims. But yeah, GTO, it's probably a, a barely winning call if I had to guess. But if I kind of put in the numbers, so say you have to call 103 to win 241 and a half, you need 42%. And now we'll give our opponent a range. We 4-bet and he had to shove over the 4-bet, right? So uh, to shove over the 4-bet, this would be the value range. At the most optimistic level, I think a lot of guys 120 deep would be narrower than this. And then you need bluffs. Right. So with no bluffs, you have 39% with ace king off. If we add, say, every ace five suited to our opponent's range, we get to 42.5%, which is roughly what we need to be break even. So if this is your opponent's range, you're break even. If I had to guess, you know, some people will not even have five bet bluffs, and a lot of people will have less queens shoving. They will just flat queens. They'll have less ace king off shoving. They'll just flat that, and and you might run into you know some range like this, where you're just super dead. So I I would tend to avoid this and just fold. Uh, and of course here opponent shows eights, showing I'm super off in terms of range. If he has eights, this becomes uh, just an okay call because imagine the range is like this, right? So eights plus ace king, ace queen suited. Remember we need forty two percent. We now have 43%. So this is not, this is not making this call printing a lot of money. It, it's a very unique scenario where your opponent is this wide. So I'm still not a big fan. They're definitely not as bad as it might be against this opponent. And yeah, you just lost a flip. Like Ace King getting it in here is just not a spot where you expect to win money. Okay. Next we have UTG raises. Hero three bet seven eight suited from MP. I think this is almost already a mistake, but again, we don't know the players, so I'm going to give Hero the benefit of the doubt. But in these tight positions, I'm not sure this hand three bets very often, and I, I might lean towards avoiding it altogether. Then we get a really tiny four bet and we flat, of course flat, again, when it's this small. But also we're thinking, you know, what is my opponent's range when he four bets this tiny? Is it aces and kings, or is it some you know, really speculative hand because aces and kings would be greedier. You have to think which one is more likely. I feel like the speculative hand personally is a bit more likely. This feels too... like you just get greedier when you have aces, if, if you guys know what I mean. But yeah, the guy plots the flop indicating he smashed it. Hero shops, UTG calls, and we have actually kings. And yeah, you lost the kings with 7-8 suited, but you know, you're you're just 30... You know, you're just 70% on the flop. So nice to face a recreational, nice to get the good sizing, but yeah, try not to get tilted, <laughs> I guess. And yeah, may maybe we'll actually jump to, to a next group of hands because I think these are a lot of, of hero getting tilted. I'm saying, you know, getting tilted because you just, you're collecting these hands and posting them. And I imagine you thinking, I'm so unlucky, I'm so unlucky. Where really it's a process of, you know, remaining focused and playing well and the mistakes you're making might very well be in a bunch of small pawns rather than these hands. Like the, these hands are all fine by you, more or less. Okay, so let's look at this hand. Hero min raises, button three bets, big blind cold calls. Hero four bets really big, which I love. Fold in big blind calls. Here we want to be putting big blind on a range. You know, cold calling the three bet. Again, I don't know this player, but very often pocket pair heavy and some ace king, ace queen thrown in there, some suited connectors thrown in there. So when you get a board with ace and, and then calling the four bet, I expect, you know, more pocket pairs. So more in the queens, jacks, tens, nines, ace queen suited range. Maybe the lower ones start folding given how big this is. And yeah, maybe this guy is a huge, you know, ATD PIP guy. We, we can't know because Hero is not telling us. And definitely you should tell us if, if you're asking for help about these. But yeah, 10, 5, 4, Rainbow. There's 60 big blinds in the pot, probably 130 behind. So 2 to 1 SPR. 
And here against the range I described, I'm just waving the white flag with Ace King, just trying to check it down, not really interested in putting in any more money unless an Ace or a King come off. So goes check check on 10 5 4, turn 6 of spades, villain bets 1 big blind. Here I would always just call, be like, thank you for the, the cheap card. Not really excited to do anything else. River King, awesome. Villain checks. Here, hero shoved. I think this is bad. I'm being honest, I haven't looked at the results. And this is maybe one of those focus spots, but again, I, I don't have the reads. My guess would be uh, that our opponent has a range. You know, like we said, he could have jacks, nines, eights, sevens, maybe he has six, seven suited, maybe he has ace, five. I, I don't know how wide it is. But this is a scary card for him to hero call you on. And this is a really huge bet. So, I mean, you want to value bet ace king, but I, I would be going, you know, against a recreational, which this guy certainly is. I think you have to go a lot smaller. Uh, half pot at most, maybe third pot, and, and just hope for a hero call. I have a feeling that, that shoving this river for a pot is just going to end up badly. And, yeah, you guys can see the results. So this guy was a huge recreational. He shows up with 10-6 suited. And if we're kind of going to reanalyze the hand, I think the fact he can show up this wide means that c-bet and flop with ace-king is actually reasonable, but not mandatory. Raising turn, I would say, still feels fairly bad to me. You know, once you've checked back, we're not trying to bluff a guy who has 10-6 here off of a pair, so no reason to raise. Like, always call turn. Consider turn a fairly big mistake. And then River, again, depending on how stationary the guy is, like I said, I feel like you need to make a bet where he's going to call you with his random pair. And, and this, this is, too, he's not going to hit the king. So this, this is too big in my eyes. So actually more interesting hands, but you need to, to give us the reads at least a little bit. So here, hero raises a queen jack off, gets called by big blind. Nine, eight, eight. One third bet. Get check raised, call with a gut shot, looks good. Turn villain checks and hero checks and I think this is again, you know, not talking about theory, but in practice, I would consider this a bit of a blunder. You know, slow playing is something that maybe you do sometimes in theory. I, I wouldn't personally do it with this hand, but more with a boat. But if you do it, it's with the expectation that your opponent is gonna, you know, be fairly aggressive later on. That that's the reason to slow play. And that's not really how you know, poker works at the low stakes level. You need to kind of be responsible for building the pot on your own. Even more than that, if you think about check raising on 988, think what are the hands that check raise? 10 7, jack 10, queen 10. All of these hands that you have super crushed and are probably check calling and are probably not putting in a lot of money for you. So this just feels like a really nice turn card to not slow play on and just go for it. And maybe slow play when you have like pocket tens or something where you block these hands. So I'd always bet queen jack. Then we have five of hearts, villain checks, hero bets 13 big blinds, villain shoves. And here we have to think value versus bluff. So value for villain would be boats. Bluffs would be something like 10-9. But then 10-9 would have to check raise in the first place, which I think is kind of unlikely. So I would expect kind of no bluffs, I guess. And then the question is like, can he have worse for value? Probably not. Can he have a chop for value? Can he have a complete spew? Like, can he check shop jack? I, I guess jack 10. Jack 10, queen 10 would make sense as a bluff. So this is a spot where, you know, generally I'm not a fan of hero calling these spots. I wouldn't expect the double slow play from villain too often. So it, it I, I, I think it's more okay. Jack 10 might check raise all in. I, I don't know. I find this iffy. My instinct was to just always fold, but I, I wouldn't blame you too much for calling. And yeah, very nice. We do find a bluff from villain. And again, a hand against which you could have just bet turn and bet river yourself. Like this ended up really well, but I, I, I don't like the slow play. Okay, next hand. UTG raises, we 3 bet, he 4 bets, call, uh, seems fine. And then we get some ace high board, villain bets we call, villain checks ag again here. Probably start betting yourself. I, I don't think 
you know, people are going to be aggressive enough if you don't, but it's more of an okay spot to check back. Then we get the river seven and villain shoves for a bit over pot. Kind of surprising to see that on the seven. Now, seven does actually hit villain a little bit because it hits something like ace five suited that, that might forbet us. Not a big deal and, and ace king certainly feels like it should call. But um, I would be surprised to see a bluff here. That's the thing. This, this doesn't feel like a card that you get bluffed on. So I would call with beyond happy and, and personally bet turn. And yeah, we see aces. So, you know, calling beyond happy kind of fits. Because who, who bluffs? This is like the best card for you. And, and maybe fold ace queen here. Ace king just feels like it might chill. So I think this is okay. And yeah, let's look at the, the last hand and wrap up this video. So UTG raises, hero three bets ace queen, we get a fold, and we get deuce, jack five, two tone, hero C bets for one third pop, looks good. Turn five of diamonds, here hero checks back. Probably barrel a decent amount. And then river four of hearts, UTG checks, and hero decides to bluff. This feels a bit uh I'm just kind of talking from intuition. I haven't analyzed this hand. I have a feeling like this might be a bit too strong to bluff. It's probably right on the border. Like, if your hand has showdown value, you probably should not be bluffing. I guess it's okay. I'm I'm not excited about it. I, I would probably have bet turn a lot, but this hand is, is just fine. And here you got called by eights, so the note to, I mean, your opponent should call eight, fold eight something. It's, it's not like a big thing, but this is probably more like a, a, a more stationary type player. And uh, here he's saying Solver likes taking a queen and just bombing, which, which is what I would have expected. And River calls a little bit Lucy. Yeah, but that hand seems okay. Hopefully that helps at least a little bit. If you want to, to post more hands, and go for it from a like you're not sure what to do perspective. I'm I'm happy to to go over some more. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. It's a new format. Lots of blogs out there. Maybe someone wants to recommend a blog for me to check out. Like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.